Hi, Roy Oppenheim here. I want to talk a little bit today about the U.S. Supreme Court's decision that came out most recent, recently about the CDC's authority to allow for the continuation of moratoriums that prevent landlords and banks from foreclosing and evicting on their tenants and, and homeowners. And in a 5-4 decision, a very close decision, the court, and it's a little bit complicated, on an emergency basis ruled that the moratoriums are not un unconstitutional in light of the fact that the CDC uh, has some implicit authority from Congress to deal with emergency pandemic situations. Now, they go on to say, of course, that, uh, the, the, that these moratoriums are ending in, in a month anyway. And if they weren't ending in a month, maybe they had exceeded their authority. And if Congress wanted to, to proceed, they would have to go back and, and get additional authority. But it's interesting that uh, many people thought that, in fact, uh, the Supreme Court would rule in a way that would discontinue the moratoriums, particularly because they're falling so egregiously on, on small businesses and on homeowners, home, excuse me, mom and pop uh, property owners who haven't been collecting rent and haven't been collecting mortgages. I mean, you have to recognize that the large banks and the large institutions that own, own apartment buildings and, and issue billions, uh, if not trillions of dollars in, in, in mortgages uh, have the capacity to earn, to, to find additional capital to get over this, this, this one year, this 18 month, 19 month hump and then continue. But the, the small fry mom and pop, uh, apartment building owner, multifamily owner, or, or even a single family homeowner, they don't have that capacity. And this was their, the money that they were using to pay their mortgage if they weren't collecting rent. If, if they were the, the, the lender, this was their retirement income and they had relied on this you know, when they stopped working. And so you have this wealth transfer that's going on from, from small businesses, small homeowners to, to, to renters and and, and folks who, uh, who own their homes who haven't paid their mortgage. And let's not forget, these weren't uh, waivers where you're not gonna have to pay your rent and not gonna have to pay your mortgage. These were these were payments that are gonna be put on the back end of your of your lease or, or, or have to be negotiated and, or put on the back end of your mortgage. And you're gonna have to catch up. And many people, unfortunately, will become of a custom, have become accustomed to not paying a rent or not paying a mortgage. And in, in some cases, we're going to see that there's going to be wholesale evictions and wholesale foreclosures in some context. That's going to have an effect on the market. And we'll talk about uh, what those impacts will be as, as time goes on. But for the time being, uh, in one month, uh, things are going to change and we need to be prepared for it. Roy Oppenheim from the trenches. Have a great day.